now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we'll go until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Out to California we go, and out to the, I guess, are you in bed right now, Will Durst? Yes, I'm in my hospital bed. You're in your hospital bed, uh, where he has been for quite a long time, although you do leave it. You go to physical therapy, and you go to... uh, I guess just to sit up a little bit for a while every day. Yeah. And uh, uh, you must be getting very tired, though, of being in that bed. I'm sure that when you're, when you're cured, when you're, everything's fine, you're never going to get, get in a bed again. Oh, I don't know if that's true. but Really? Yeah. Yeah. So how are you feeling? What's happening? How's the... Uh, you're in bed. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I love being in bed. I love lying in bed and having the covers over me. It makes me comfy. And watching TV. And, and watching TV. What what do you watch during the day? What is your... You've got a TV set there because Debbie, your wonderful and adorable wife, uh, bought you a TV set. Nice TV set. So what do you yeah. watch? What do you watch? News. News. That's it? Yeah, they got uh, CBSN, which is CBS News. Yeah. And so I'm kind of stuck with streaming. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, NBC News. I'm mm-hmm. watching NBC News. Yeah. And I can get MSNBC on that one. Yeah. What are you using to get all these things? Maybe like a Roku or something like that? A Roku. Yeah. Do you you do know this interview, uh, not today, but next week, will wind up on Roku. We have a Roku channel. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Gabnet, G-A-B-N-E-T. It's Gabnet and uh, okay. Gabnet Live, I think, is maybe what it's called. And then there's a there's Gabnet, Gabnet TV. Gabnet TV. Yeah, where I actually have a couple of old interviews that we did uh, a while back when you were erect. Uh... You know, but uh, how's the therapy coming along? Pretty good, except uh, the left leg refuses to rejoin the band. Really? Now, what is the prognosis on that? Do they say that, okay, maybe nothing now, but one day it'll suddenly start kicking? Oh, yeah. 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 As soon as I can bear a little weight on it. Mm. Well, my question is, um, um, you, you, I, I hobble to the bathroom and things like that. Oh, you do hobble. You're very, very good at hobbling, huh? I'm a good hobbler. Yeah. That sounds that sounds okay. You know, that's you couldn't hobble a year ago, right? No. You were lucky if you could even be unplugged. Uh, it's been how long's it been now? It's been a year and about. Four months, maybe five months. Yeah. Wow. October of twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you have a stroke versus anniversary uh, at all? Like yeah, you have a party or something in your ho- in your hospital room? I, yeah, October sixth. October sixth. Okay. Well, we'll have to mark that down as your second uh, um, uh, stroke anniversary. Yeah. I, I have a friend who is uh, paraplegic. Uh, and he, uh, every year, um, goes out and takes himself out to dinner and celebrates uh, his anniversary of becoming a paraplegic. Uh, How did it happen? It happened. He, he had an operation on his back, something for his back, and I guess they screwed up or something, and he lost all uh, feeling to the bottom half of his body. And who wouldn't want to celebrate that? Well, uh, of course you celebrate it. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I had a very interesting experience when I went in for my, uh, my, uh, cancer operation for the prostate and, uh, they were going to do this thing where they, uh, they put in these seeds, okay. In the prostate, 
they had to, uh, they didn't put me out because they said I was too old to be put out. That they, they were worried that, you know, at my age, they, they, they'd rather not take the chance of putting me out. Instead, they gave me a spinal, which I thought would hurt, and it didn't hurt at all. And then all of a sudden, I lost every feeling in the lower half of my body. All right? Oh, wow. And then he went and did whatever he was going to do, and they juiced me up with, like, uh, 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 you know, Valium or something like that. And I was in la-la land, but I could still hear them all talking to each other. What was interesting about that is when they were talking to each other, I finally got to hear what they talk about when they're doing some procedure and somebody is ostensibly under. And they were saying, like, so what are you going to do this weekend? Oh, I don't know. Hey, hand me the sutures. And I heard all, I heard all the discussions going on in the room, but I felt nothing below my waist. And now they wheel me out, and I'm not juiced up anymore, and my mind is, is lucid. And I'm in the recovery room, and they won't let me go until I can get a, until I can number one until I can urinate, okay, and until I can walk. And I'm, feel, I'm, fe I'm yeah. feeling my legs. There's nothing there. I mean, I knew what it was like. My friend was a, a who's a paraplegic. I knew what it was like to be a paraplegic. You know, and and uh, that was no fun. Yeah. Oh. That was no fun at all. So you you you're only like half a paraplegic. You got the one side is working fine, right? Yeah, right side is okay. Now it was in your hand and in your leg. Was it on both of them on the same side? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the stroke happened. Something in that area that you know impeded on that. How's your hand doing? Uh it's better. I can raise it. And... Yeah. Are you, the fingers and, yeah, you're gonna be able. Are you gonna be able to type with it soon? I hope so. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna write my little stroke story. You, you, the stroke story? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You. Because I was on a ventilator for a couple of days. Yeah. That, that. Do you remember? Yeah. Do you re remember any of that, or or does it kind of get blocked out? Uh, yes. I mean, I remember when they were drilling holes in my skull because mm -hmm. they had to put a carpet sweeper in my brain, in inside my skull. Yeah. To move all the liquids out. Yeah. Was it was it a Hoover or a Kenmore? Oh yeah, it was Sears. <laughs> it was Sears. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. So yeah. they had to drill holes in my my skull. And the, the doctor kept going, oh, shit. Oh, you don't want, shit. Wait a minute. You don't want to hear a doctor saying that. No. You don't want to hear that. And Debbie says there was blood everywhere when she came to see me after that. Oh, jeez. But, but you don't remember most of that, though. You don't remember. No. You, oh, oh, she has pictures. But you do remember him saying, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, that's that's wonderful. That's what a, that's what a patient wants to hear during an operation. Oh shit! When he's drilling holes in your skull. <laughs> well, you know something. I thought about this uh, uh, last night when I was thinking I was going to be talking to you today, and I was thinking about the fact that you picked a really good time to get a stroke. Man, did I pick a good year to go down? Yes. Yes. You know, if you said, well, you know, I, what I missed most about having a stroke, I missed this, I missed that, you didn't miss anything because you wouldn't have been able to go out anyway. No, I had to cancel about $50,000 worth of gigs. Yeah, but that wasn't because of COVID. That was because of the stroke because your stroke happened before COVID. But as I say, look, it, you would have had to cancel those gigs even if you didn't have a stroke because of COVID. Right. So you didn't miss anything. So if you get better by the end of this year, okay, then you missed nothing. No, I just had a lost year. You had a lost year. Exactly. Exactly. And, and everybody else did too. Any indication when they're going to get you home? Um, I'm hoping by... Uh... By Easter? By Easter? Okay, that would be nice. That would be really nice. You know. Well, they want to move me to a more intensive ther uh, therapy place. Yeah. 
where I would get three hours of therapy a day. Yeah. And they, they, they're, they're beginning to believe the therapy is working because you were saying that, that at a certain point, insurance or gov- you know, Medicare or whatever won't pay for it if you yeah. aren't getting a certain amount of uh, advantage out of the therapy, right? Yeah, if there's no benefit. Yeah. Or, uh, so they, do they feel there is benefit there? Yeah. Okay, good, there's good. Room for advancement. Yeah. Let's talk to you about stuff that's going on. Uh, have you been watching, you, since you watch MSNBC, which is which is the news service you like the best? I mean, in other words. Uh, I like a CBSN. Yeah. Because they got the the local news. You know, they, they, got, they got 10 different yeah. local news. Right. You can watch the, you can watch the news in Seattle if you want to with it. But uh, also what I like about CBSN, do you find that they're more even-handed in the stories? In other words, they're less judgmental about things? Because I'm sick of MSNBC. Because, they, you know, they, they feel, oh, we're, go- we're going to be the liberals. Well, here's what a liberal is, okay? And then they go with it. And I, uh, you know, I'm not happy with MSNBC, but CBSN, I always find, is terrific. You watch MSNBC News now? Do I watch who? NBC News Now. No. Is it better? It's their half hour, you know, kind of encapsulation of the news. Okay, so here's half hour of the news, and now here's another half hour of the news with updates, and here's another half hour of the news with updates, right? And half hour, you watch it. But each half hour is different, right? They don't keep running the same thing over and over again. No, they keep running the same thing over and over again. Oh, okay. All right. But if you want to go get all your news in one bite, that'll do yeah. it. Have you been following the uh, Andrew Cuomo thing? I, I always have problems with uh, that. I mean, uh, I mean, one woman complained because he made her feel uncomfortable because he kissed her hand. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so to some to some gentlemen, that's mm-hmm. a that's just a polite way of uh, yeah saying I want your body. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, we've had to pursue. Is there a TV set on there? Yeah, I'll turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> there, oh, there we go. We, he's we now have his ceiling, ladies and gentlemen. We have the remote control. Hey, his hand, that hand's working okay. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, yeah. Anyway, so as I was saying, so, you know, I mean, I the thing that I felt was that your finger's in the way, by the way. Oh, yeah, sure. yeah, get it out of the way, and let's see your full face. There we go, there he goes. Okay, wait a minute. There, okay. This is Will Durst Nostrils. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> I just, you know, the thing I felt about it is, He's a single guy. And I know how we all, I mean, how we pursued women, right? When we were pursuing them. And there was a certain amount of question asking and touching. To feeling say, out. Yeah. Move your finger again. Not feeling up, feeling out. Feeling out. Well, yeah. Not feeling up, feeling out. Now your phone is, uh, we, you, we lost your picture there, Will. I think you may have hit... Uh, on your, are you there, Will? Will, are you there? Well, let me pause this interview till we can get him back. Okay, pause it. Yeah, okay. I'm in the seat yeah. driving mode. You're in the what? You see, we we we're now we're back. We put it on pause because we had uh, he had some kind of problem. You put it? Oh, you put it on a driving mode? No, I I moved uh, the iPhone and thought I was driving, so it stopped. <laughs> anyway, anyway, where were we? Okay, we were with Andrew Cuomo. The thing I thought about with Andrew Cuomo is the guy is single, okay? And I remember my single years, um, which were a lot of years. And you would go out on a date, and you didn't know whether the, you were tra- attracted to the woman. You didn't know if she wanted to you, you, you do something. So you felt them out verbally in many cases, which is what Andrew Cuomo was doing there. 
Uh, let's see more of your face and get your finger out of the way again. Your finger is in the way of the camera. Wait a minute. I get fat fingers. You got fat fingers, yeah. Uh, you know, and so, I mean, I the, these were the things we did. If, if it happened today, if we did this today, we'd be in trouble, Will. Oh, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, well, I'd be in trouble. You know, I, I, I went back and I tried to think. Was there any time where I was improper to a woman? And, I mean, I came on to them, but if I was rejected, I immediately backed off, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it sounds to me like when he was rebuffed, he backed off. So, I mean... I mean one woman one woman claimed that uh, she told him she was a sexual assault survivor yeah and he came he came who hits on a woman after hearing that story <laughs> well you don't hear about him pursuing after a certain point you know it wasn't like he forced a woman into something uh, the worst claim is is that this uh, one woman was asked to come to his room in the uh, mansion, governor's mansion, because he was having trouble with his iPhone. And uh, he put his hand up her blouse. Okay. Um, and that's, well, that might have, a, might have been a problem with his perspective, you know. Well, no, it could be that uh, he hit my, find my phone and the phone was listing itself as being under her bra. You know, so, I mean, that could be. But, you know, I mean, and all of these, but the thing is, all of these are accusations. Nobody has been put under a lie detector. Nobody has been put under oath, more importantly, so that they tell the truth. These are all accusations made in a vacuum, a legal vacuum. And so we now have Chuck Schumer, Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Net, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, and uh, well, uh, uh, Casio Cortez, all coming out asking for him to resign, without having any legal information on the thing. I but mean, Kristen Gillibrand was the one who uh, Al Franken. She of, yeah, she forced Al Franken out. Yeah, and, and that was uh, that was a pleasant little. Foray. I mean, I, I last time it was time to vote for her. I didn't vote for her. I voted for, I think, the independent or something because I just couldn't bring myself to vote for her. I thought she was just the whole Franken thing just pissed me off entirely. You know, he's, he's a comedian. He's a com absolutely. And I'm, you know, something I saw him. You would like this. Go if you get YouTube. Just type in Al Franken, and there are a couple of recent interviews with Al Franken, and he's back to being funny again. You know, and and uh, I think maybe he's more valuable as a political commentator than he was as a senator. You know, but I mean, he was he did was, did a good job as a senator. He was more of a lefty than even I ever was. You know, and I appreciated that about him. I always hated him. Because he beat me at pinball all the time, but that was that. That's another story altogether. But you know, it, it just it's just the, the this these witch hunts that are going on remind me very much of the McCarthy era, in which all you had to do was be accused to lose your livelihood, and that was it. I mean, look at Louis C.K. You're familiar with the Louis C.K. case, aren't you? Yeah, that's kind of creepy, though. Well, it, it is creepy, but it isn't creepy. And it's all accusation, again, but he admitted to it. He supposedly pulled his penis out, and before he did, he asked the three women in the world room, you don't mind if I pull my penis out, do you? And nobody said no, so he pulled it out. Now, that's first of all, I think he's a real gentleman for asking, all right? Rather than just pulling his penis out. Yeah, you know, he first wanted, and they, none of them said no. And they all sat there while he did it. So, and all of a sudden it's, oh, we were so, oh, oh we've been marked for life by him pulling out his penis. You know, usually guys who pull out their penis don't have much to show anyway. You know, 
The guys who do don't have to pull out their penis to show it. The women can just see the bulge in their pants. But I'm tired of all this stuff. I'm tired of, of people I like and people who, who are good getting this heat pushed on them. In the case of Andrew Cuomo, I, I keep saying it, but I think the guy kind of saved my life here in New York. You know, by getting people in line and lowering that curve that we had that was just... All right, uh, flat curve, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, so, I mean, I, 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 uh, it bothers me a great deal. By the way, you have you had your second shot already? I have. My arm fell off. Did, did it really? How did you feel the second? But the feeling came back in my leg temporarily, <laughs> right? <laughs> my arm fell off, yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, how, uh, did you but have... But then it grew back. Yeah, you didn't have any side effects much, did you? Um, it was weird. Yeah. Like, my arm hurt where the shot went in. Yeah, that, that that's true. And then every other day it hurt. Really? Not two days in a row, not consecutively. Right. But every other day it hurt, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Well, you know what's great about it? I could come see you. You know, you could come see me. Uh, it, it, we're 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 protected now, and we're protected from giving it to other people too. You have your card. I have my card. You know, I carry it around just in case I need it. Although I'm going to put it away and then use it when I need it. But supposedly they're going to start having passports that allow you to travel to Europe and stuff like that, and you have to have the card to prove that you. That are. makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, what the hell. You know, I mean, it, 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 I know other people have had two shots. All those people could come over and see me where, where they say you can congregate if you've all had shots, you know. So uh, I'm thinking of holding a uh, have you had a shot party, and if everybody's had two shots, gets invited, <coughs> right? And we'll have serve a nice meal and stuff like that. So anyway. And double shots. Huh? And double shots of liquor. Double shots of liquor. Exactly. It's very good. I'll uh, I'll add that to my party. By the way, you're invited, but I don't know if you can come. So I don't know if I want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, you you know the best thing is is that in your situation in your situation if you if you uh, had to wait and, if there was a big long line for the shots, you know if you went somewhere. If you just had a wheelchair, they put you right to the front. Marjorie showed up with me w with a cane, and uh, there was this long line, and I said, where's the line start back there? And she said, oh, forget it. You're old people. Come with us. Ah. And they put us, came, went, went, we went to the front of the line, and they said, table five, table six. Boom, boom, boom. We're out. I come home. I'm here, home, before I was supposed to get my shot. Before I was scheduled for my shot, we just Holy. It, it, we did because they threw us right in the front of the line, and I think it was either the fact that we look amazingly old, uh, or or and this the is cane. the cane did it, and I kind of suggested the cane before she left because she had a bad knee that day, and I said bring the cane, bring just just bring the cane. Okay. Props always help. Yeah, props yeah. always help. And, you know, and she skipped and jumped and ran into the front of the line. You know, but they were very nice. They were very nice. I mean, very, very terrific people to deal with. They were just. Where'd you get your shot? Well, I got it at the school near us, but then the school was going to go back into session. Okay, so they moved it to another school uptown. So we had to go up to like 135th Street, and. Uh, we went there, and uh, that's where we got our second shot. And then they're all, all really nice. Once you get the second shot, I mean, you probably were lying in bed when they did it. But they, the guy went, congratulations, you know. And then I would go to the waiting room where you're supposed to wait for 15 minutes, and they say, congratulations. You know, it's like a happy fizzies party because you got your second, uh, second happy shot. Happy fizzies. Fizzies party. Don't you remember fizzies, those things you used to throw in water? Yeah. And they, and they used to talk about, well, let's have a happy fizzies party. You don't remember that. See, that's too, I do. That's too old. You do. It's too old for a lot of my listeners, you know, to remember fizzies and a happy fizzy party. 
Do you remember the polio shot? Oh, yeah. Maybe a sugar cube. Y- yep. That Well, it became a sugar cube. It became a sugar cube. It was, oh, really? it was a shot initially. It was a salt vaccine. What The sugar cube was the Sabin vaccine. And I remember, uh, I remember that implicitly as a kid. It was a uh, here. It's a sugar cube, cube with a little, purple. Uh, like a purple or blue dot on top of it. And that was the. Black. Yeah. yeah and, then, mm. and, and that is what really saved kids from polio because it was a way in which they could get it without getting a needle, you know. Right. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Uh, and as always, it's always great talking to you. It's always great seeing that you're okay and that you're coming along and that, you know, you're there, you know. But stay around. I'm going to end this here, but I want to talk to you for a couple of minutes. Anyway, everybody, that's Will Durst. He'll be playing at a hospital near you. Yes. Sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, I didn't press the right thing, and then I didn't get enough sound, and now we're okay. All right, let me. Start. Anyway, there's Will, and uh, we'll be talking to Will again. I actually, I was talking to Debbie today, his lovely and attractive wife, and she said they just got him a. Um, a, a new iPad. His old iPad had problems. Okay, his old iPad was uh, was uh, was not uh, not working well. So they took it. To, they got a hold of Apple, and Apple said, "Well, we can't fix this. So we'll give you a new one." So he's getting a new one, and how that's going to help us is that the reason why he was kind of looking like he was looking there was because he had to hold an iPhone, and it 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 just it's very difficult. So. Uh, we should be able to do that with them a little easier uh, the next time. But I like having them on because I think it's therapeutic for them, and I don't care if only one person listened to it. I would still do it because I I like giving them the therapy, okay? I do have an interview that I did with Debbie, who's his wife, today that uh, it, I did basically as a fundraiser. Uh, if you want to um, uh, uh, help them out, because it's very expensive, uh, what you can do is you can go to uh, GoFundMe and then just type in search Will Durst, and Will Durst will come up, D-U-R-S-T, uh, first name Will, W-I-L-L, and it, his name will come up, and uh, uh, there will be all the information on how you can uh, send the money and so on. If you listen, if you go to uh, YouTube, it's up on YouTube, the interview I did with her today. And I may do some improvements on it by adding some photographs and things like that. But right now, I just wanted to get it on. And it's meant kind of as a fundraising video. And uh, if you just go to it, you'll see some really great, uh, great stuff. Uh, 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 Her talking about the whole process about the stroke and... Then, but more than anything, the the cost involved. Do you, so far they have spent, or the government has spent, is the insurance has spent two million dollars. Okay, that's how expensive hospitals are these days. And uh, so uh, that is the uh, that's what's you know what's going to happen. I'm red again today. I don't see. I find if with I if I turn my lights to a different temperature, uh, if I do this, you see, you see how the redness goes away. See, but uh, I'm not. I don't want to do that. I like it orange. Okay, I don't care. Doesn't matter. I'm getting old. My face is getting red. Anyway, go to YouTube, and uh, the uh, very top one right now is it just is. I didn't know what to title it, so I called it Will Durst's Stroke Story. It's the only way I could describe it, because I wanted to describe it in a way that people would notice it, and if they knew who Will Durst was, they said, he had a stroke, you know, and then they will watch the thing, and uh, all the information there is uh, on how to, how to, you know, send them money and so on. Well, it's time to go to our, our, our panel here. Uh, let me... Uh, 
Let me just, uh, let's see here. They're all, they're all coming up. See them popping up there? Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see. We still have two more to join. Yeah, and Charlie Wallace is yet to join us here. Uh, here comes, uh, mm -hmm. come on, Charlie. Come on. Come yeah, on, Charlie. Just click, <coughs> click. Well, maybe he, maybe he hasn't checked back yet to see mm -hmm. that I to asked him to join. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Good. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, what? What did you say, Trucker Steve? Didn't say anything. He burped. Oh, did he burp? I said good. Oh, good. Good. You see. You did. I said good. Yeah, they thought you burped. See, he didn't burp. Okay? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sounded like a burp. As Jeez, you're nothing but trouble, Alan. Nothing but trouble. I mean, <laughs> God. Anyway, uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, Jeff is here so far, and yeah. Robert Natali is here, and uh, Alan is here, and Brian is here, and Trucker Steve, and his dog Rocky. Point to Rocky so they can see Rocky. There, his, his dog is right in back of him there, and travels with him on the road. He's in his truck right now. Kind of looks like he's maybe in a motel somewhere, but that's really the back of his truck. Uh, you're still using someone else's truck, right? Am I correct about that? Oh, this one's mine. Oh, this one's yours now. Okay. Oh, you're back in here. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So, and, and where are you in this fine country of ours right now? Uh, Barstow. Barstow. Barstow, California? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. It's a, oh, oh, there are three towns uh, that are named in uh, a song called Route 66, and it was Bar... Uh, uh, what is it? Bar, uh, Kingman Barstow, San Bernardino. Bernardino. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Remember, it, 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 there isn't still a Route 66, is there? Or do they have one highway mm -hmm. they still call Route 66? Mm -hmm. They do. They do. Uh, it's marked as his, historical. Historical. So okay. it's, not, it's not listed on the maps anymore. Mm -hmm. But when you go drive through the old parts, yeah. like parts of Interstate 40, yeah, you'll see signs for it. Oh, okay. Because I, I, when I was a kid, my parents and I drove across country, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember taking Route 66. I also remember that it, in those days, cars didn't have air conditioning, and it was a hot, hot drive. And the best kind of air you got was open up the windows, and then those, remember the wings on yeah. the windows? Yeah. Those were used to kind of get air to come yeah. falling through. They were called the wing. Those were called the wing windows. The wing windows. Yeah, the window wings. The window. So wings. I, oh, I thought Route 66 was for a bunch of old timers that drive old cars. What do you mean old timers? Old? Are you making old jokes now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm making a joke about Brian and his old cars. He's got some really nice pictures. Oh, okay. Of old cars. All right. You, you I never knew that I could get into old cars that much. Brian, those Brian, you collect old cars, right? Yeah, I try to, but uh, it's hard keeping up multiple cars. So I had my gold '57 Cadillac for a while, and then I had a 1940 LaSalle that I had done and <clears throat> was really big and. It was hard keeping both, so I sold the LaSalle, and now I'm building a 1934 Cadillac. I mean, I, I don't know how a guy like uh, Jay Leno, for instance, oh, yeah. maintains that mm -hmm. many cars, and he maintains them by hand himself. He likes With repairing them. He, no, he, he, ha he has a staff that does that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, because some of those cars, you know, some of the the Packards and some of the Duesenbergs and stuff like that, he has a couple specialists, and I've met them in uh, Monterey before. I had a girlfriend. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, I just thought it passed right along. I, Only I'm, one? I'm not trying to brag here, but I had a girlfriend. <laughs> no, I had a girlfriend whose father bought a, I don't think it was a Duesenberg. There was another car they made at that time. I think it was something else. It was like a Duesenberg. That, that's, Should have stayed with her. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> parents are, they had a Duesenberg. Wow. The car was oh, what was it called? It was it was it a was, Rambler. No, it was of that <laughs> same era, you know. And they were oh. making those cars with the big, just giant. It's the what do you call it? Where the fenders, fenders. giant fenders, big fenders, yeah, yeah. big fenders, yeah. you know. Fins? Huh? 
big fins on the back? No, not no, no, no. That that's that's more into the fifties. The fins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this was he. This was a thirties car or something, and mm -hmm. he had restored it, and it was it was gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. So some of those old cars are very special. There was a period of time there where they were really trying to outdo each other in making cars. Mm. Like, uh, a Duesenberg had how many cylinders? Well, they had 8, 12, and 16. 16? I don't... Do they make 16-cylinder yeah, the, the, oh, cars anymore? Yeah, the, yeah the, Cadillacs, the Cadillacs were doing the same thing. All the Cadillacs and Lincolns were doing the same things back then. Yeah, either the V8 or then the 12s or the 16s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but they don't they don't they don't make cars with sixteen uh, anymore, do they? No, but you can still uh, get them. Twenty thousand dollars for one of them. I I was gonna get for my car I'm building, but I said no yeah. thanks. I'll get a newer Cadillac motor. So Phil, who doesn't call this program anymore, and and by the way, Phil, you're invited to if you want to, but he just sent me a note saying, and he was right. It was an Auburn. Auburn. Uh, one of those. Are, you, I, are any of you aware of a Auburns at all? Sure. Oh yeah. 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 That's, That's a nice car behind, behind you, Brian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man, yeah. I can't. Yeah, I'm uh, terrible in this thing, right? Uh, right well, oh. no. Stay, yeah. Get into it. Yeah. Just get up, and and uh, move your hands there around a little we bit. You'll you'll, you'll you. find that it'll work if you move your hands around. Oh really? Yeah, if you move, you see, I told that's, you. That's right. my 1940. I sold, and then uh, yeah, 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 go on my Facebook. And what is that car? That's a 1940 LaSalle, Cadillac LaSalle. Wow. wow. Remember the, the uh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, All in the Family? All in the Family. Our the LaSalle yeah. ran great. Yeah. Our old LaSalle ran great, yeah. 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 And then the gold one's next to it. The gold one? See it. What's it called? Yeah. yeah, the gold one's the 57 Cadillac. That's oh, chopped oh, okay. and airbagged. And oh, okay. This car was really big. It was on the cover of a bunch of magazines and... They get a personality of themselves. They start popping up on ads. And now, stuff did like you that. pay to have that thing restored, or did it come that way? No, it was stock, 100% stock, and then I tore everything apart, and then uh, friends helped me put it back together and did all the – I I know a lot of Hall of Fame famous people, so they helped me with all of the all of the metal shaping, all the metal fabs, and I'll do the design work, and then they'll help me <laughs> execute everything. I do as much as I can. When yeah. I was younger, I used to do everything, not now. I, uh, keep that picture up there for a minute, Brian. Yeah. Everybody look at Brian's two eyes. One of them is glowing. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's the devil himself. <laughs> Little details. Very good. Very yeah, good. but that, yeah. that is uh, that is a um, uh, that's a beautiful car. What year is that? Yeah. Right, here's uh, there's Obama with my picture. Can you see that one? Yeah. Right. Well, we uh, saw a part of him. Yeah, I know it's anyway. It's very hard for you to show, show that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna get off this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. The LaSalle was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. LaSalle was a very nice car. What year was that? 1940. <clears throat> really, 1940. So the after the 57, I wanted to get into the 40s like a tail dragger. They say, thanks, <laughs> Charlie. Yeah. So, so when the car's really low in the back and they put the skirts on and you can't see the back tire, they call it tail dragger. Yeah. So I wanted to build a tail dragger. Nobody's done a, like a LaSalle before. So I found that one and, and did that one up. And then um, the 34 Cadillac is pretty special right now. They're only made 1,500. And this is the depression time. So the person who owned this car originally was very, very wealthy because the 34 Cadillacs have the door on the side for the golf clubs. So if you can imagine the 30s, you know, this is owned by a rich guy who had another car that they probably drove with the family. And then this car was his, oh, I'll go hang out with the boys and go play golf. Well, know. then you pr you probably know the first car I ever owned, which was a 1941 Pontiac Torpedo. Ah. You know, do you know the car? I think so, yeah. Yeah, mm. it had a look to it, man. It was yeah. like, mm. yeah. But, I mean, I bought it in uh, 1958. Mm -hmm. So, actually, it... It came out before, uh, uh, after after I was born, but I got around <clears> to buying it about you know, how many years later, eighteen years later, something like that. Um, Here's the car I meant to be getting. Oh, <laughs> the car, Is that car the you... one you stole. <laughs> no, that's a car you might be getting. Yeah. What is that? My it's a Saab Sonnet. Mm. How old is it? Which nobody knows. 
Uh, it's from the uh, late 50s. Oh, really? Yeah, almost almost 65 or now, something like now, that. now, that picture, did you draw that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a good little artist. Yeah, so. I can't even draw a straight line. I mean, yeah. so anybody who even does a semblance of something that I can recognize, you know. So one of the kids that's Pam's sister's son. Yeah. Fixes up cars. Yeah. And he's got this car. And I'm thinking about looking at it. But the problem is he's down in uh, South Carolina and you mm-hmm. can't, I can't get there. Oh. Yeah. I see. Okay, but but that car is still in running order. Yeah, I completely restored it. Uh, uh, Phil Meyer says it's a 1970. Yeah, it's probably right. Yeah, Saab Sonnet. He. That's how, how do you story. know that, Phil? Well, I can't ask him. Shout he back, Phil. He watches the show all the time. Well, I, he listens to the show all the time, but he doesn't call it anymore. We we met up in a mutual friend's car show, in last summer. Really. Phil, right. Yeah. Oh, Phil and you. Yeah. Wait a minute. Last summer, we you had a you had the, the COVID thing going on. Oh, yeah. okay. So you were tempting fate. Yeah. Risk. Risk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it was when everything was starting to come down, and there was yeah, there yeah. was only that. We've done some cruises. Yeah. A lot of people will cruise somewhere, mm-hmm. go to the Monterey Coast or something, and come back. We've mm-hmm. been doing that a little bit, so. So, so, so I got to tell you my latest problem. You ready for my latest technical problem? See this? Somebody got a sign? Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Phil writes, I know stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, see this? I've been drinking that a lot. This is Kirkland sparkling uh, ca- uh, carbonated flavored water. Okay? What's the flavor? Excuse with? me. My nose is itching like crazy tonight. Now, isn't that nice? But it comes in various flavors. It comes in various flavors. And one of the flavors it comes in is kiwi, which is very tasty. And I would love to drink it for you here and show it to you, except it's green. (laughs) And and if I hold it up, it disappears. Yeah. If I put it in front of my face, my face disappears. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so I can't drink anything except this and the orange, but the green I have to save for when I'm not on the air. So, because in I case, know, in case people are watching, that's problem. not that's not, that's not really New York in back of me. Well, it is New York in back of me, but it's you know, oh. it's a oh, yeah. uh, what? It's a green screen. So, any something which if Brian had a green screen, we could have seen his cars better. Yes. Yeah. Just, Are you there, Brian? Or, or, or he was frozen there for a second. Yeah, I froze up. Yeah, excuse me, folks. I'm not picking my nose. I got a, either a hair or something. Yes, just... you are. You, you know what they say? Oh, really? Pick, they say you can pick your nose and you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you never you want to. Wait a minute. I wouldn't. Wait a minute. I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Ago. Charlie, you've never heard that one? Yeah, that's old. Uh, that's really old. We did that in high school. Picked each other's nose? No. <laughs> we did that little joke in high school. Oh, right. That's you can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose, and then everybody would laugh. <laughs> you should be a comedian, Alex. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, how you doing tonight, Robert? Oh, Doctor Doom. I, I believe Dr. it's Doom. time for Doctor Doom. By the way, you know ah. I, you you do know I was Doctor Doom. Oh, uh, no! What happened was uh, I've told this story before. I was at a part of a show at Carnegie Hall, put on by Marvel Comics in those days, and Stan Lee, and Stan Ooh. invited me to come on, and they were reading comic books, having famous people read comic books to the audience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was asked by him to come in, and I read the part of Dr. Doom, who I didn't even know who Dr. Doom was, but apparently everybody else did, but I played Dr. Doom. so I And that's was... when they gave you the sports Emmy, right? Do I have the <laughs> No, story that straight? was years later I got the sports <laughs> Emmy. 
boy. Anyway, oh, oh, well, I, I got mixed up. I lost my head. Well, here I thought about this time uh, Robert asked questions. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh, here, here, here's something. Go to the right guy first. L listen to this. Just a little bit of this, okay? This is something I did back in the uh, 70s. And uh, this was long before we had the movies, and there were only the comic books. And this was a radio <clears throat> show that was done. And this was the pilot for the radio show, which I was the announcer on. <laughs> From the pages of Marvel Comics, Seven Up, the Uncola, brings you another episode in the continuing adventures of the amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man stands like surrounded by the Vulture, the Lizard, and the Green Goblin. The police are firing from below. The mysterious sound of a desperate voice calls to our hero through the night. Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Is Spider-Man insane? What is going on? Now let us journey together through another thrilling adventure, side by side with the amazing Spider-Man! Okay, so... Did they, it, you we were paid for that? Uh, I, did, did I get, I don't know if I got paid for that or not. I was sarcastic. I was, right? I was hoping you cashed that check no, real I, quick. Well, I was doing that kind of, you know, Batman yeah. announcer ish thing. That's what I was trying to do there, mm -hmm. you know. I like the way you screamed like little girls at the first part of that. Like, what? I don't know. The first part of it had like little girls screaming. It's not, I, he's, no, that wasn't, and, and, no. Anyway, uh, so that was uh, that was uh, I was I was in on that whole Spider-Man thing with Stan Lee and so on, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. But that that was my one of my claim to fame is that we, you know, who played Spider-Man on that? Uh, who played, who played the guy on Deep Space Nine whose face was ch he could change his shape and his face? And oh, so Rene Abergeois. Rene Abergeois played Spider-Man. Don't we have to confirm this with Phil? <laughs> no, I don't think Phil knows. I I I believe Charlie's right though. Yeah, but well, he played the the shapeshifter on Deep Space Nine. He was also in Mash in the movie Mash. Yeah, he was around for quite a while. He died a few years ago. Yeah, uh, but uh, it, it, did anybody die? Somebody died the other day. I'm trying to remember who it was. It happens most every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the mm -hmm. yep, it, Yafit um, Koto. Yeah, Yafit Koto. Anybody remember Yafit Koto? Yeah. Who? Yafit Koto. Great actor. Yeah. If I showed you his... Stuff. If I showed you his... He was in Live and Let Die. Yeah, he was in Live and Let Die. But he did a lot of other films, too. If if I showed you his face, you would say, oh, that's Yafit Koto. Okay. He was a homicide, wasn't he? Or one of those... Um, I think so. Detective yeah. shows? Yeah. Yeah. I would take that he, back. He, he's one of those guys who you usually identified by saying, wasn't he with the guy who was in that thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you've seen him in everything. You just can't remember his name. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know. Uh, but uh, so, so how's every... Uh, oh, Dr. Doom. Of course. We have, to, <laughs> we have to go to the new Dr. Doom. I've, I've turned over the mantle of being Dr. Doom. <laughs> To Charlie okay. Wallace. Okay, we <laughs> lost another one thousand one hundred and seventeen people today to COVID. Now we're almost five hundred and thirty-eight thousand Americans dead. Wow! It just keeps it keeps happening too. And do you yeah. know things are getting worse in New York again? Yes. Yeah, they say it's it's uh, somehow it's getting worse. I don't know why. You know, am I protected or should I wor still worry? You wear a mask. Just wear your mask. Because I've got my temperature taker here. I can, you know. Just keep wearing your mask for a while. Keep wearing your mask. Did Don't you hear the latest, uh, hmm? the, the latest Trump uh, scandal? Um, you remember, remember the, uh, the, the the hospital ship that he sent to California? Yeah. Well, the Navy was sending it to um, Seattle because it was needed in Seattle. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, at the time, Gavin Newsom was saying nice things about Trump. So uh, Trump uh, Trump called him up and said, hey, you need that ship? 
I can send that ship to LA and he and fucking uh he sent it to LA instead of Seattle where it was needed. It wasn't even needed in LA. Yeah, but what about the second wave? Why why didn't they, either one of those ships get called out during the second wave? Because they never they were never really prepared to do anything with those ships. I mean, you know, they weren't prepared for you know, COVID patients and stuff. Because the second wave was a tidal wave. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. dumb, dumb. It was just a big fucking publicity event, like everything for Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What was, what's oh. the latest thing? Trump now is telling his minions that they should take the shot, take the vaccine. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm sad about, because it turns out that 49% that of Republicans have said they're not going to take the vaccine. And that really was good news to me. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. you know, like, hey, you're complaining that you'll never win another election in this country? Well, if all the Republicans die off, that's a, a definite possibility. Right. All right. right. Um, but then today he comes out and says, oh, you guys, you should get the shot. I got it. You know, uh, it's the way to keep everybody protected. Well, how, how all of a sudden did he become reasonable about this? Couldn't he, he have said, done he this today? Couldn't he have done I this heard, a year ago? I heard somebody was teed off with uh, playing golf and hit him in the head by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Good possibility. Good. I, I teed off after dinner tonight, actually. It's a whole nother story. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm trying to figure that joke out. I was he teed <laughs> off. It's a euphemism for farted. Oh, I didn't, I never heard that. Yeah. I yeah. never heard that. High yeah. school again. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, uh, well, I didn't pass high school in that You could respect. make a list of <clears throat> such euphemisms, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Cut the cheese, you know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Who stepped on the spider? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who stepped on spider? a frog? That was a frog. Well, you know what I always like uh, is the fact of how many, how many words there are for various things. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. for a woman's breast. Oh, yeah. Right? There are any number of names for it, and even names you could make up on the spot, and they know oh, what sure. you were talking about. Will you look at the hobbit ha habas on her? <laughs> Makes a nice pillow. But everybody knows what you're talking about, right? Yeah. She has yeah. nice hobbit ha habas. And you can incorporate no no end of fruits and vegetables too in such a pursuit. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cantal watermelon? <laughs> nice water. <laughs> nice oranges. Yeah. Right. Any fruit would, would do. Sure. I, well, wait a minute. Banana wouldn't. Banana no, wouldn't. No, banana no, wouldn't. No, no, no. That's a different euphemism. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're nice, talking about a nice banana, banana and a woman, woman, you better do a cup check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're talking about yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, you know what I I was doing. This is a boring topic. This could be the most boring topic I've ever brought up here, but I there is. In all this Me Too stuff and all this, it's National Women's Month, right? Or Women's Day? Was it day? The whole month. Yeah. It's the whole damn month? Oh, God. Anyway, uh, it, it's National Women's Month and something they never do. Does anybody know uh, who the second female director was in Hollywood because the first one was dead by the time she started making this woman started making movies and was the first woman to be a member of the Directors Guild of America who Nora Ephron I don't know no mm -mm. no long before Nora Ephron Ida Lupino oh yeah, that's right oh yeah that's right yeah. yeah and nobody ever does a tribute to her you know, they've never been a tribute at the Oscars. They've never given her a posthumous Oscar for her. She was the first. She was not only, not only a director, but she was also a writer, producer. She was a lovely star for years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
This woman. Hot dogs. Yeah. This woman but does. The, the one that did the, uh, the, the, the dance with the, you know, the, all the fruits on her head. No, no. That was Carmen Miranda. Was Carmen oh, Miranda. Carmen. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong Sorry. Yeah, she was from uh, Brazil, Carmen uh, Miranda. I believe she was from Brazil. And an uh, interesting thing about Carmen Miranda, she was Jewish. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Imagine that, a Jewish woman in Hollywood. Even, even she I was always from, thought of her as Latina. Yeah. yeah. Well, she was because she came from Mexico, but she was Jewish. She was but Jewish. But you said he's, she was from Brazil. Yes, but she was Jewish. There are no mm-hmm. Jews in Brazil. There's, of course, there's plenty of them. Of course. You know, yeah. Not yeah. quite sure why they'd want to live there, but anyhow. Yeah. Because after World War II or whatever, Sure, all the Nazis. There was there. places to go. Well, the, the thing was that all the Nazis <laughs> went to Brazil because yeah. uh, the uh, people who were in power down there were very positive towards the Nazis. So they yep. protected them. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, so I, I, I watched this documentary tonight about, about Ida Lupino. And I had to. I went on YouTube because I figured that's where you find <laughs> any documentaries about people. And I can find hundreds of documentaries about the Beatles and about the Monkees and about uh, uh, any number of directors. But when it came to Ida Lupino, mm. one documentary, mm. one documentary. Wasn't she I married just, to Howard Duff? Yes, she was absolutely. Yes, sir. <clears throat> For twenty years, it wasn't a happy marriage, but it was. In fact, she oh, became, was she wasn't a drinker until she married him, and he was an alcoholic. So to get even with him, she became one too, and it followed who? her around for the rest of her life. Who was yeah. this? Who? Ida Lupino. No, who was she married to? Howard, Howard Duff. Duff. Howard who? Hey, Duff D U F F. Howard know. the Duck. Never heard of him. <laughs> Hillary Duff's brother. No, yeah. I'm just That's kidding. That's because you're not old enough. <laughs> Duff I'm beer. Old, uh, Duff beer on the Simpsons. Yeah. Yes. And my question yes, for Jeff. today is: Do you remember Ida Lupino? Who is Irish? They come from Ireland. <laughs> I know, but it, hey, I got my green stuff. shirt on. Today was oh, was St. Patrick's Day, and it was almost <clears throat> lost on me till I asked girlfriend, "Is today St. Patrick's Day?" I know. I it didn't seem like it. No, because no, <clears throat> the parades they weren't holding the parade. Yeah, there. because <laughs> of the COVID. Right. They didn't hold them last year either. No. This is the second year without St. Patrick's Day. Thank <laughs> fucking God. Am I right? You know what I'm talking about, right, Robert? You don't want to be in Manhattan on St. Patrick's Day. All right. So about 20 years ago, I was working at the Board of Ed in the technology department, and we were trying to learn a new piece of software. Mm-hmm. And so I got shipped over to New York City to take a training course mm-hmm. on this particular software. Well, yeah. unbeknownst to me, it was St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. A, and mm-hmm. B, the house in which this training was to take place was next door to McSorley's Oh, house. geez. Oh. <laughs> it's a yeah. true story. I finish the training course. I walk outside and two guys are pissing on my tires. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the real treat, if you want to ever have a treat, is on St. Patrick's Day. I mean, when it's full-blown St. Patrick's Day and we don't have COVID or anything else, is take a subway around 3 in the afternoon, okay? Up the piss? Oh, green piss. Ed, oh. move. Yeah, that beer goes through you. Oh, and they're, they're peeing in hats. And they're barfing all over the place. It is the most disgusting holiday we have. Luck of the not, Irish. Don't know. blame the Irish. Huh? <laughs> they don't blame us. We, you know, we drink uh, all every yes. other day of the year, but not that day. <laughs> yeah, but the Irish have small penises, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey. It's not going to get monetized. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, if, if, if it's green, we can. <laughs> Mama told me not to come. 
Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, they said that was the Irish curse. Is that true? I never heard that. Mm -mm. I've heard it. Uh, well, anyway, so I mean, I just I, the worst the wor worst time I ever had was on a St. Patrick's Day on a subway, and I got on. I didn't even think about it, and I got on around around three o'clock in the afternoon, and it was just it was disgusting. The only Everybody thing, said, "Oh my God, oh, there's I, Alex Bennett. Let's throw up." The only thing more <laughs> disgusting than that is if you haven't been to a beer fest in Germany. You haven't lived. I mean, I went into a bathroom and there literally was someone pissing in a hat. <laughs> they couldn't find anywhere to pee because everybody was in there peeing. So they were peeing anywhere there was an opportunity to take a It's leak. an hour later when the farts start coming. Beer farts? Nasty oh, like a oh, dog. Really? I, I was out of there before the beer farts. But oh, I went well, into, I said, I have to go to the bathroom. You know, so I go to the bathroom. I walk in. I go, my God. God, what is happening in here? <laughs> and I mean, there are people peeing on each other's legs and in <laughs> hats. You know, total lack of any kind of bladder control. You know what I'm talking about, Robert? Yeah, well, the day the day I referenced, I drove home praying to God that I didn't get a flat. Because if I did, I was going to leave the fucking car on the top. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little different it, it, than it, a Sunday it, at a 49er game. The, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. That candlestick. Remember they had the troughs? They yeah, had well, the they big troughs in, and the people they, just peed. They'd just piss in the sink or whatever. Oh, yeah. They all look the yeah. same. <laughs> Bless them, Jet man. games, they don't even go to the men's room in the first place. Yeah. yeah I'd be wearing be green tonight, only I'd disappear. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know. Uh, what you really got to see is go to the Folsom Street Fair someday. Then you'll, I don't know, I guess you got to be in San Francisco to know about the Folsom, Folsom Street Fair. Well, the Folsom, Street Fair, well, the Folsom <laughs> Street Fair in San Francisco is in an entirely different set of uh, circumstances. Yeah, it's not this so is much a, this is, this is public urination. This is a, uh, <laughs> this is a very tasteful gay gathering. Folsom? <laughs> it's an S and M gathering. If, if, exactly. If, if if seeing people pee on each other at a beer fest in Germany, the equivalent is the Folsom Street Fair, with big fat guys with hairy asses wearing assless chaps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Jack Phil, and off Phil's got a set of those. <laughs> Phil's got a set of those. I see. Okay. Good. I I want him to wear his assless chaps sometime. I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. I mean, am I right about you? You've seen the Folsom Street Fair, right? Absolutely. T Absolutely. Describe it. Go ahead. Describe it. It's actually so big that it was San Francisco's, oh, the state of California's third large, a couple of years ago, obviously, it didn't happen this year, uh, the third largest single day event, the Folsom Street Fair. The first is the Rose Bowl. Yeah. The second is Gay Pride in San Francisco, and the third is the Muslim Street Fair. And I, I mean, there's like. Now, why is it two of the biggest are gay? I don't know. They they seem to like to come out and drink and party. And it was uh, was Women's World Month lost on somebody? So oh, there are a lot of there. women there too at the Folsom Street Fair. Yeah, wow. but you know, they're going down on each other. I don't know. Hey. You know, I don't like to go to an event in which I'm going to stand there going, well, what about me? <laughs> I'm sure we can find a guy for you at the Folsom Street Fair. No, I don't want that. <laughs> you know. Larkin uh, will take you out. It's sometime I mean, in September. I mean, I had my try at a guy once, so it's just <laughs> enough, you know, okay. it's enough for me. Because, uh, you know, I'm the only one here who can say I definitely know I'm not gay. Well, I'm in a I'm in a pool league with, uh, you know, but uh, you know, every, pretty much a lot of the guys on the almost all the guys on my team are gay, but I'm not. I'm the only het hetero, and it's you know, I mean, we, we sometimes we, we we play at different bars around the city. And yeah. we Sometimes we go to these gay bars like on Polk. There's one called the Cinch, and I, I there are so many penises on the wall, pictures of penises. I was like, I I have to go take a break, and they go, what, what, what's wrong? Why? I just needed a break from all those penises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
too many fucking penises on the wall. Well, when I was That's starting out, said. when I was starting out in this business called show, I wanted to be an actor, and so I did a lot of theater in San Francisco and in the Bay Area and so on. And uh, most of my, and one of my directors especially was gay, and uh, he once he didn't hit on me. He just said, "Are you are you gay?" And I went, "No." He says, "Too bad. Otherwise, I'd hit on you." You know. Uh, but uh, I, I immediately, I guess I never, it never bothered me. You know, the, it, a lot of guys go, oh, I don't want to be around those queers, you know, ah, that kind of attitude. And I, I never had that attitude. Uh, number, Doesn't bother I'll tell me. You, I'll tell you what the number one reason was. My parents had two friends who used to come over to the house all the time. And uh, they were very close to each other. I, and I didn't, I was still a kid at the time, and I didn't really know what they were all about. And it turned out they were gay, and they were a gay couple at a time when, you know, in those days, this was like late, maybe late 40s, early 50s. Uh, yeah. You didn't tell the world you were a gay couple. You just kind of yeah. hung out and said, you know, we're uh, confirmed bachelors. And my, I said to my father once, I said, what, what is with them? They're, they're always together, and they seem to really like each other. What is, what is that? And my father said, you know how your mother, your mother and father are to each other? And I said, yeah, well, that's how they feel about each other. And I said, you hate each other? <laughs> <laughs> Pull each other shithead? Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But he, he explained to me that this was, they, they were in love too with each other and that this was okay for them, you know. Uh, and okay and I, so from a very early uh -huh. age, I, I didn't have any prejudice in that, real, in that way. Uh, Did you ever notice the Pope comes out in a dress designed by Gucci and talks about gayness being an abomination? Yes. Did anybody yeah, yeah. like? <laughs> Anybody ever stop and think about that? Yeah. Did Gucci make his outfit or with just the shoes? I thought. Uh, I think. I think. I think this, they had a design once for his robes or something. Yeah. Yeah. If well, not, it kills the, well, the joke. Late, the latest thing is he says that being gay should not be people should not be nasty towards gay people or whatever. Yeah. You know, but that it's an abomination in the eyes of God. <laughs> Yeah. In the next breath. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I'm when are we going to get a pope who is advanced enough into the twentieth century that he's finally gonna say, Hey, you know, love is love, go have a good time. You know, God would not mm -hmm. want to deny you the joy of uh, of a relationship because it's an abomination in his eyes, which it is I hear they're all gonna move to Connecticut. Thank you. All going to move. I'm on. kidding. I'm kidding. Humor, humor. By the way, how's COVID up there in Connecticut? It's better, isn't it? No. Oh, it's terrible up there too. How's it doing well, in New Jersey? The weather. Numbers are up. Right Numbers are up. Okay. Yep. Good. Well, well, good. I'm glad we're all doing our part to keep this thing going. You know. We, well, we had uh, uh, we had one area that builds the some of the, the beads that we use for our chemicals. Yeah. And one, two people had COVID and they wiped out the whole department. They have their own quarantine right now. So I walked in the office today and there's one area where they sit. Only one person is there today. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's still, it's still hitting. I don't know. And we have, we have letters to get the vaccines and everything. And people, I talked to some people and they don't want to get the vaccine. I just like, don't understand. Why? I don't understand these people that go, I don't want to get the ga vaccine. Uh, and I, I, Cuomo put it best the other day. Uh, he said, those are nice tits. No, he, no, he, uh, <laughs> he put it well the other day when he said that if you feel that uh, it's really dangerous to get the COVID vaccine, you know what's even more dangerous? Not getting Not the COVID getting vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So you're all done with yours, right, Kevin? Monday. A oh, Monday. Oh, Monday's mm -hmm. graduation, huh? <clears throat> what? Which one do you have, a Pfizer or Moderna? Uh, Moderna. Moderna. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm. I'm. I root for Team Moderna. 
if yeah. they don't run out. If they don't, well, I don't think they will. I, I think we're getting. Yeah, I don't think so. But it isn't. I, I, we don't hear about them running out of it now. Well, they're having issues where they, they have, uh, they had some issues out here where the people weren't getting their seconds and they had to wait another week or they had to go somewhere else and get it or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, here's hoping you get yours okay. And, yeah, I'll yeah. just run them down with the car. You know, it's a drive-through, so right, I'll just right, just, just 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 go go go. Um, if go. I don't get it, nobody gets it, and I'll plow them all down. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Alan. Um, so I got Pfizer, and if I had a choice, I would take Pfizer. Um, if I didn't, I would have just taken whatever they gave me. Uh, but Pfizer to me. Um, they're one of the world's largest pharmaceuticals and vaccine makers. And this is the first product that has ever made it to market with Moderna. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I, I, I know a lot of people mm -hmm. have got Moderna and the science behind it says Moderna is good, but if I had a choice, I did not. Fuck you and your Pfizer. Pfizer. Fuck you and your Pfizer. Okay. Let me just say, <laughs> can I say that again? Fuck you and your Pfizer. Right. Uh, right. Robert. I Okay, I'll no, just let's close politicize right now. which. Let's politicize which drug company you favor now. Yeah. Now, yeah. which one did Pfizer. you? Wait, 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 which one did you get, uh, uh, Pfizer. Robert? Pfizer, and I get my second tomorrow. Okay. Nice. And you got Pfizer, Jeff? Yes, and, and most of the research it, that was done at Yale was done for Pfizer. Oh, okay. Actually, the whole country of Israel. Uh, used Pfizer, and their studies are coming out real positive. Yeah, Good. but it, they, they, they're not coming out positive for Moderna because they didn't use Moderna. Well, uh, go to the CDC website, and you'll see that okay. about a third more Pfizer shots are being used in this country than Moderna, and I have no, I have no reason. Uh, it, could be the, it could be the amount that's available. Is what Maybe. it's all about. I'm sure. Now, if the only thing you could get was Johnson and Johnson, would you take it? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, I have uh, stock in both Pfizer and Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. Well, you know, Curad's the next one coming out with it. Yeah. That's I right. Will. You get a free band aid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bosco too, and you'll get two shots at once. Yes. Yeah, wrapped yes. in plastic. Yeah. I've been going through a thing with Costco in trying to get one drug, and it's oh. it's pregabalin, which is the uh, generic for Lyrica. Okay, it's for my what do you call it? My uh, neuropathy. Neuropathy, yeah. And for some reason, there are two pills for neuropathy. One is gabapentin, and the other one is is what I'm getting, which is pregabalin. They're both essentially, and I, I, I wrote my doctor about this and asked him, they're both essentially the same drug, except one's a little stronger. The pregabalin is a little stronger than the gabapentin. Because of that, it's a controlled substance. And my doctor wow. said it's pretty much the same drug, and who knows why <laughs> it's a controlled substance. <laughs> but so here's the problem that I have. They, they couldn't just uh, uh, give it to me because I had a prescription at a drugstore for it, you know, at a pharmacy for it. Uh, so they had to get a hold of my doctor. So then my doctor had to get a hold of them. And this took like five or six days because he, mm -hmm. we got the wrong address and then there was the right address. Finally, they do that. And then they send me a note saying, the state of New York will not allow us to send you this drug until you send us a copy of your driver's license. I mean, I've never had so much trouble getting a prescription in my life for something that probably shouldn't even be a controlled substance. You'll probably have to do that every time. And now mm -hmm. I have the stuff, but I'm afraid of taking the shit because if it's a controlled substance, will I get hooked on it? <laughs> you know. Probably. But but oxy you could probably buy on the fucking street corner. Oh yeah, I could right uh, hey, I down could, the block. Believe it or not, I can get it for my wife. I mean, so pergabalin. There you go. Pergabalin's name brand. Everybody's heard of Lyrica. Yeah, yeah, that's, but but that's what pergabalin is. Yeah, but they, but I have to get uh, Lyrica because they, I'm willing to take the, uh, you know, the generic. Take uh, a ride up to Connecticut. Not Connecticut, but. Uh, 
Why? They'll give you any uh, more. Huh? Where do I say? Canada. Canada. Oh, Canada. yeah. You can get all those drugs for, for, for almost free. Yeah. But, but I can't figure oh. out what, which is causing me more buying it from Costco or getting it from my drugstore. But I have to pay because I have my, you know, my health insurance, my prescription insurance. I have to do $450 before they start taking it, adding it to all my prescriptions. So I'm buying it at Costco because it's cheaper, you know. So hold on. So Jeff stole a car. He punched a whole bunch of people. And now he has experience running drugs over the border. I'm, I'm, I'm losing all respect for this guy. Yeah, well, I, what's he, going he, on? Uh, he, he, let's very admit happy. It. Let's admit it. Wonder why I so still talk to you. He looks innocent. He's yeah, he you know, hardly, hardly says anything on the show, but we know what he's up to. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't be surprised if next we find out he's a pimp. He's a narc, a DEA <laughs> agent, <laughs> drug enforcement. Scary dude. Yeah. Really, yeah, could be worse. He could have been here, a teacher. Here is this. Here's this. Here's the story of the day. Now it's very sad. I think it was like eight Asian women got killed down in Georgia yeah. by a eight. guy who went into these massage parlors and shot them. Okay, they catch the guy, and he admits to killing all of them, but in his favor, he says. I didn't do it for racial reasons. I had a sex problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. He's, so we don't have to worry Irish. about that being part you know of the... Oh, that goes. The, we, we thought the sign said misogynist parlor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but and he, was but he wanted to make the more. point that he didn't do it for racist reasons. Because, you know, there's been a large amount of yeah, problems for Asians. Asians yeah. <laughs> In fact, we have, we, to Florida to do we, more have too. we have a couple of friends. Uh, he is from the United States. She was born in China. <laughs> she got a job in the United States, and he got a job in China. And so they got married. So now they're doing this, you know, back and forth. They, but they can't right now because, you know, nobody's traveling anywhere. So they're both mm -hmm. here living in New Jersey. But they're thinking of both moving back to China. Because they feel that the kind of racism against Asians in this country is getting rather dangerous. Thank, Thank you, Donald Trump. Trump. Well, yeah. But Thank the you guy you Trump. talked to on Tuesday, who regularly called it the Chinese flu and thought it was funny, will see no connection between that assertion and what's going on in the my case. I think maybe in yeah. retrospect, if I asked him, he would say maybe that was a bad thing for Trump to do. You know, I mean, it, it set up, well, he set up Trump just a whole scenario of, whole, of demonizing the Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, they gave us the COVID and they are, they're hacking our, our elections and on and on and on. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it's pretty... It was pretty terrible what he did. But nevertheless, they're saying they're thinking moving back to China, living in China, because uh, it's just too dangerous here for Asians. Think think how lucky we are yeah. as a country that we're getting rid of COVID. We've got a vaccine. The economy is doing okay. And Donald Trump is no longer president. Mm -hmm. But there, there are bigger problems. I mean, you know, I don't want to bring it down, but, you know, oh, we, th this this area is a little bit, you know, nice area to live in in, in San Jose. Yeah. And we drive down. Every, every Cloverleaf has homeless now. Yep. And we know we Robert, I mean, Alan, in, in the area, yeah, over in Fremont, they have yep. this, they have a wood one made out of two stories on a tree that's in a Cloverleaf. Absolutely. And nobody's doing anything about this. There's one lady who has this. Right when you're hitting the on ramp onto the freeway from Albert Expressway, and there's this lady who has this against the fence, and she has this whole setup. She comes out there with the ducks and, and is like feeding the ducks, and she's right at 85? She has that. Is that the and, one at 85? Uh, yes, yeah, 85 yeah. in Albert, right there. I went by it the other day. Yeah, it's been it, on the news. 
we're we're, we're so locked see. in with all these other distractions right now, and we're not solving these other issues that we used to talk about many years ago. Yeah, have you seen uh, Tenth Street and One Hundred One in Gilroy? Oh, horrible. unbelievable! It looks and, like and, it and looks that like off-ramp a also, campsite. Yeah, the off ramp also. They they yeah. had this they had this area that they had a lot of people there. They cleaned it out. They bring a big truck in there, and then a week later, that thing's populated again. There's a camper shell over there. You know, we don't have that same problem because no, I think be, no, because endemically, and I would you agree with me on this, Robert? That in New York City, it's just a different kind of thing. You wouldn't start a tent city because when the snow and the cold gets too here, cold. it would be yeah. too cold for that. You know, California yeah. is still okay for living wherever you can plop yourself down. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. what happened was, is it threw a lot of the poor into the subways, and that's where they would stay all night. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and but they, Alex, it's, it's, you got a lot of homeless problem too, in uh, even in Seattle and Portland. Oh yeah, those are northern cities. Well, oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is, is that uh, I I think that uh, uh, you know it 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 it's a little less of a problem here. It, it doesn't manifest itself in that way, although there is an area under the city, uptown, where lots of homeless people are living. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can go in there, and it's just like a city down there. Uh, I've never been there, but I've seen pictures of it. We kind of ignore that, you know? Mm-hmm. It's kind of out, of out of sight, out of mind, right? And we put the blinders on but we've got it here, you know, and we've, we've got it, certainly had it in the subways. And when they pushed them out of the subways because they wanted to clean the subways and keep it from being infected uh, during COVID, they moved them out of there and they wound up on my corner over here with their yeah. with putting up slight, you know, not tents, but they, they brought couches. Are you ready for that? They brought couches. Yeah. Um, what people hopefully, dump off on the freeway, they pick them up and take them to their places. That's right. That's right. Well, I mean, you, you know, my my question is, why weren't we doing something about that? Why aren't we making sure, you know, that these people have some place to stay? I think that was Brian's point. Yeah. yeah. And and some people say, well, they just don't want that. They like living in the subway. Oh, well, yeah. I, who likes living in the subway? Come <laughs> on. I mean, maybe if you're if you've got a some kind of a mental problem or something like that, you you know, you do. But most people would like to have a little dignity, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, it's, there's yeah. a. I mean, I know I know all of us try when we have a chance, but yeah, we're um, <clears throat> we're over getting uh, the family. We went to Yogurtland uh, over Almaden Expressway, mm-hmm. and yeah, there's a guy. There was a guy there right when I get out of the car, put my mask on, and he says something I couldn't understand him. And he's a, you know, he was probably about forty or maybe in his thirties, white guy, and he asked if he had a dollar or two. And I told him, "Are you hungry?" And he said, "Yes." So I went. I said, "Come on." So we went to the burrito place, and I got him. I got him a meal. Wow. I told him to order whatever he wanted. Yeah. And talk to him a little bit, and you know, it's just, just he's trying to find a job and homeless and. Some of the people do want a job, you know. My thinking is yeah. kind of strange. When you said when hiring. you said yogurt land, I, I thought told them that. when you said yogurt land, I thought that might have been a porn theater. <laughs> you know. But anyway, huh? 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 You like that one, Robert? You like that? <laughs> hey, we didn't get to one of your list questions tonight, but we'll get to it's it okay. next time. The next time. Conversation flowed. Next time. I used to know a Japanese hooker. What? But I, yeah, I used to know a Japanese hooker, but I didn't have the yen for her. Oh! Uh, we had to wait around long enough for that, huh? Oh. Okay. Hey, everybody. Give a big wave goodbye. And I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? And thank you for joining us this evening. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow night, okay? Bye-bye. And there they go. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for this evening. They're, they're going off into the evening. Uh, Jack Bishop's going to form another citizen panel next, right here using uh, using Skype, okay? And the address will be Gabnet Live on Skype. You t- just type in Gabnet Live, and it'll take you right there. In the meantime, in between time, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh,
10.30, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, please, wear a mask. It's just, it's just for a short time more, okay? And be safe out there. Bye-bye.